Hi everybody, welcome to the Matt Western 365 YouTube channel and another episode of Flow Bites, a number of small bite-sized videos that are designed to help you with your day-to-day -day flow problems and give you some ideas about how you can use flow better. This is the second part of a small series in Flow Bites called Does It Exist? In part one, we looked at how we can use the filter control, uh, action in order to try and ascertain if a piece of data or a file already exists. And we used SharePoint in that example. I'm gonna be doing exactly the same thing today. However, I'm going to be using filter queries and an expression to do exactly the same thing. Now, the reason why I personally like doing it in the, the way that I'm about to show you is because I find that doing this as a filter query means that I only retrieve the information that I need from SharePoint in the first place. And it also means that I'm using one less action in my flow, uh, which means that I can keep my flow that little bit neat, that little bit tidier, uh, but that purely comes down to a little bit of my OCD. Um, the other way is perfectly fine as well. So that's what I'm trying to achieve. Let's go and have a look at how we do this one. So first of all, let's just have a quick reminder of what my SharePoint list looks like. So I have my daily log list. In my daily log, I'm tracking the day, which is stored in the title field, and I'm storing a number of times that an event might have happened, whether that's number one, number two, or however many that might be. Now, the scenario that I want to achieve is that if Monday has been already created, then I don't want to do anything. If I, for example, put Tuesday in instead, then I want that to be created in my list because it doesn't already appear. So now if we have a look at the flow and just remind ourselves where we started in part one, we have a manual trigger, which is going to request a day of week and a num the number of times that something may have happened. And then I have a create item. Now at the moment, because this app these actions are sequential, it will just simply take the information from manually trigger a flow and create the item into my list for me. So I need to take some steps, again, just exactly the same as I did in part one, to determine if some that entry already exists. If it doesn't, then I'm going to create it. And the first place that we started in part one was we added a get items action. And I selected my list of the daily log. And in part one, I didn't do anything else at this point. I just went straight on to the next action. But what I want to do today is apply a filter query. And the information that I'm interested in querying for is in the title field. And I'm going to say that it's equal to the day of the week. So my get items action is going to try and retrieve information from my daily log list where the day of the week or the title is equal to the day of the week that I apply through the trigger. Now the get items action will re uh, always return an array. That could be uh, a blank array or it could be an array of items. So now I can almost apply the same principles that we looked at in part one. Now in part one, we put an additional act, uh, action in place. We used the filter array, and then we did a test on the length of the array. In this method, I don't need to do the filter array. I can just go to, straight to a condition and test the length of the array that comes back from get items. I'll go ahead and put a control and a condition into my flow. And from here, I can choose my value. Now, the value that I want is the length of the array that comes back from get items. Now, this is now much simpler than it used to be. Previously, I would have to come into my expression. I would have to type length. And then I would have to manually type in the reference to the array that comes out of get items. This is now available to me in dynamic content. So when I flip back under get items, I have value because value uh, is the ar array that comes back from get item. So I'm going to select that and I'm going to click OK. So now that's going to return a, a numeric value. So if th that length is equal to zero, that means that it doesn't exist in my list. So I can go ahead and create it. 
So I'll just quickly save that and let's go and test it. So my day of the week, uh, let's go for Friday, everybody's favorite day. And the number of times will be seven. And if I run the flow, okay, so that's successfully going through. Flow's completed successfully, let's follow it through. So my inputs were Friday and the number of times was seven. If I expand get items, let's have a look at the array that came back and it came back at empty, which is what I'm expecting because it wasn't in the list. So when I look at my condition, the expression is evaluated to true. And so we've come down the green leg and my item is being created. And there it is in my daily log. So let's just go and test the negative route to that as well. So let's go and save and test. And this time let's go for Friday again. And this time I'll go for number of times 10. So this time I'm expecting a different result. So again, just to uh, follow through. So the day of the week is Friday. The number of times is 10. If I look at my get items, so remember it's evalu it's looking for any items that have got a title which is equal to Friday. Now this time, because something has been found in the list, it's actually returned something in the array. So I've got at least one item in there. I, in fact, I have got one item. So then if I look at my condition, this time the expression has evaluated to false, which means it's now come down my no leg, and so therefore it's avoided my create item. So that could actually then be expanded out in quite a few different ways, regardless of whether you use part one or part two in terms of testing for your, uh, the existence of your item. You could then use the node route to go and do an update instead of a create, or you could go and choose it to do some other action, such as reporting back to the users to say that that item already exists. So there we go. That's the second way that we've now explored as to figure out if an item already exists before we actually go and do something within our flow. Just as a recap, the first way that we looked at was the filter array web part, which means that I can take all of the items for using the get items action from SharePoint. I can then filter that because I get an array from that action and I can use my filter array to do some quite complex uh, matches uh, and filters based on the, the information that's coming out. The second way uh, was the way that we've just seen where we can use a filter query to only pull the information out of SharePoint that we want. So we're already doing some filtering at the point uh, at the point of the information retrieval. And then we're using an expression. So we're looking at the length of the items that are coming out of SharePoint uh, to determine if the item exists. If it does, then we can do something. If it doesn't, we can do something else. I hope you found both of those episodes useful. If you do have any questions or if there's anything you'd like to see, please do let me know. Please feel free to reach out at MattWeston365 on Twitter. Feel free to find MattWeston365 on LinkedIn, or please do uh, contact us through the Microsoft Flow community forums and myself and a number of other Flow Norts will be happy to give you a hand. Hope you enjoy that. Have a good day.